We're only a week into the diplomatic agreement between Israel and Turkey, but it's already becoming clear that the deal could bring major security improvements to the Middle East. That's at least a view of the Jerusalem Post columnist Amot Asael, who has been closely following the developments. Asael told ILTV Steve Leibowitz that the deal is a win-win situation for Ankara and Jerusalem. It's profound. Um, Gaza is not what this is about. Um, this was Israel's argument all along. Gaza was a pretext for something else. It was a pretext for a Turkish um, diplomatic outlook, a new vision that sought to resurrect some of um, the um, long-vanished Ottoman clout. And that was um, the, diplomacy, the diplomacy that came to be called, not by the Turks, but by everyone else, as neo-Ottomanism, uh, whereby they sought to restore the bridges that Turkey had to the Arab world and in terms of Israel, this meant that the Turks wanted to impress the Arabs by being virulently anti-Israeli, something they had never previously been. All those decades when they were ruled by secular Turkish governments, this Islamist government wanted to go back to the Arab world and to do that at the expense of its own ties with Israel. It worked well as long as the Arab world was under its previous management. Ever since the outbreak of um, the civil wars that uh, are now uh, plaguing the entire Arab world, the Turkish government quietly began to understand that, first of all, Israel is not its problem. Its problem is with the Arab world. And secondly, the problem with the Arab world is urgent and massive. And they saw that as a result of their problems with the Arab world, first of all, they are awash with Arab refugees. Three million Syrians are in Turkey, burdening the Turkish economy as the Turks see it. As a result of this conflict, they suddenly found themselves at conflict with Russia, which is for them, unlike Israel, Russia is for them a historic enemy with whom they had 12 wars along recent centuries. All this was extremely bad from the Turkish national interests viewpoint. And so they now reached the conclusion that neo-Ottomanism does not work. And if it does not work, you might as well shed your previous inclination to create a conflict with Israel. They quietly decided to restore ties with Israel and with Russia. This is a sea change, and I think it means that Turkey, even under this intrinsically um, uh, unpleasant uh, management, understands the value and the utility of its ties with Israel. It will certainly be so with the future's uh, governments. So. On the flip side, what's really in it for Israel? I mean, after all, we did have a, a, an important strategic relationship with Turkey at one point. We had very strong economic ties with Turkey. We still have some economic ties with Turkey. But we also are developing relations with their historic enemies like Greece and, and Cyprus. Uh, what's really in it for Israel? First of all, um, uh, the most immediate and tangible uh, result will be in the realm of gas. Uh, Israel has um, now extremely vast gas findings in the Mediterranean, very close to Turkey's shores, and the Turks are in bad need of such gas. The Turks' main gas supplier are the Russians. The Russians did not uh, discontinue the supply even during these very, very tense months that they had. But from the Turkish viewpoint, you have to suspect that things might someday reach such a point and that the Turkish dependence on Russian gas is, from the Turkish viewpoint, extremely undesirable. Receiving an alternative uh, uh, ga uh, uh, source of gas uh, from Israel is for them, therefore, strategically beneficial, besides also being economically beneficial. And for Israel, needless to say, a, a client as nearby and as thirsty and as well endowed as the Turks is also extremely valuable. So this is in this tangible sense. As for the Greeks, you're right. In the wake of the conflict with Turkey that we had over the past half decade, relations with, Turkey, with uh, Greece and with Cyprus became extremely warm to everyone's happiness. This, I have no doubt, Israel will now work hard to retain. And there is no contradiction. You can work this well, just like we have um, made sure to not um, uh, use, um, to not allow uh, the warming ties with Turkey to come at the expense of the already warm ties with Russia. It's a very delicate game that Israel needs to play, remaining on good terms with all these antagonists that we're surrounded by. And to do that through trade, 
And I think that what is fast emerging here is a new Middle East, which is much less, much less pretentious than the new Middle East of the Oslo Accords, whereby we thought we'd have a European Union type of borderless region where everybody moves um, uh, freely, uh, uh, with uh, people, goods, credit, and even ideas. This is not where we're headed. It's not going to be the European Union, but it can get close to NAFTA, the North American model, whereby you fully retain your sovereignty and you do not, do not delude yourself that uh, you are going to defy political gravity, but at the same time you energize trade, and this by today clearly includes Israel, Turkey, Greece, and to quite an extent Egypt as well, and Jordan. Hopefully more countries will come along. Amut Sael, thanks so much as always for being with us at ILTV. Thank you, Steve.